So I'm sitting in my truck right now. I'm about to head out to shoot some images of lower Saranac Lake. It is April 28th, 2018. We're two days away from May and it is just dumping snow out right now. So you might not expect or plan on going outside to photograph in these sorts of conditions, but you can actually create some really nice images in bad weather. So that is what I'm gonna try and do right now. I have no idea what I'm gonna find, but the trees are just blanketed in snow. There's a lot of contrast in the forest right now. I'm hoping maybe I can find something along the edge of the lake that'll be nice and appealing. So we're gonna go do that. Kyber, let's go. Huh? So it's really tempting to just hunker down inside on days like this, especially when you get a big snowfall in the spring and you're sort of mentally ready for summer. But I encourage you to, to consider getting outside and shooting during these bad weather conditions. As long as you can do that safely, obviously you wanna put your personal safety first um, but you can find some really interesting compositions and there's, I feel like there's a lot of mood in the landscape on days like today. And they're sort of scenes and environments that a lot of people don't get out in. So you stand out a little bit more with your photography when you're photographing days like today. The key is just being prepared. Obviously I got my rain jacket on to keep myself nice and dry. Uh, good footwear. I have traction, micro spikes in my pack if I need them. I'm not going really far, but just in case. And, you know, perhaps go somewhere a little bit closer to home. And that isn't quite, uh, is a bit of a trek. So that's what I'm doing today. So as expected, you know, this is going to be a really challenging shooting situation, finding good compositions and good images in sort of suboptimal conditions. But if you look hard enough and you keep an open mind about the environment you're working in, you can find some really, really good moments to capture. And you always have to remember that you're trying to tell a story of this place at this point in time. So you, it's good to sort of remove expectations from what you thought you were gonna capture if you're working in these sort of harsh conditions and, and bad weather. So I wanna show you the sort of compositions that I'm looking at. Might not look like anything great, but if I throw a long lens on and zoom in, you know, this little island out there that's just barely visible through the snow showers. I think that's gonna be a really great image. So I'm gonna set up to take this shot. Now I am going to switch lenses. So doing this in sort of precipitation environment is something you wanna be a little careful about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, really don't wanna get moisture inside my camera body. So I'm gonna orient my camera body facing down. If I get some moisture on this lens, uh, that's not quite as big of a deal. I'm also 
hovering over this whole bag set up with my body to block any moisture precipitation that's coming down. And then I want to just have my rear cap loose on this lens so I can do this swap as quickly as possible. So there you go, that quick lens exchange. I do not think I got anything, any moisture on the rear element of the lens or in my body. The other thing that I'm doing is keeping my camera bag with the pack cover up and just to keep all that equipment nice and dry and the last bit you want to do is make sure you have your lens hood on. That's going to help keep moisture off your, your front element and keep your front element pointed down as much as possible. Even sort of think about that when composing. You want to avoid getting moisture on that front element. All right, so I have my my camera setup. I am not using any filters or anything on this shot. They're not necessary. But the other thing is they're just gonna be uh, like magnets for this precipitation that's coming down. So wanna try and avoid any moisture or precipitation on that front element of the lens. Um, I got all my settings ready, everything set. And uh, so I'm shooting F8. I know that's one of the sharpest apertures for this lens. Um, I'm zoomed in all the, all the way to 200 mil, uh, which is the 70 to 200, 2.8 that I have on, the, on my D750 right now. So, you know, I'm going to remove that lens cap, do my final adjustments, and try and capture my image as quickly as possible, just to avoid moisture on that front element. I can clean that off, but the, the more of it I can avoid on there, the better, the longer I can shoot without having to you know, keep cleaning my lens and dealing with those sorts of issues. So just little tips to think about. Okay, so I captured that image. I'm just gonna um, grab my gear, pack everything up and, and I will to proceed on kind of along the shoreline here and see if I can find any other images. And I'm really looking out sort of everywhere in the forest behind me. If there's any sort of interesting details I can pull out from there, obviously the lake and the islands and the short far shoreline, uh, all of those different elements I'm really looking at as much as possible to try and find a few good images to tell the story of today here in the Adirondacks on a nice snowy April day. Okay, so I think I might have found my second image for the day. I was walking along the shoreline and I saw this stream. It's a really tiny little thing coming down from the spring runoff that's occurring into the lake. If we come down low along the lake shore, I think there might be a good composition with a wide angle shot capturing the motion of this stream doing a long exposure. I might need to throw a neutral density filter on as well as that snow and that snow covered rock in the distance. And for those that follow my channel, you know, one of my pet peeves is trash. So I'm gonna pick up this can and carry that out. One piece of gear that I would highly recommend that I do not have with me today is an umbrella. It may seem weird, I actually prefer to hike in the summer with an umbrella. 
and photographing in bad weather, being able to hold an umbrella over your gear and yourself really can help you keep moisture off the front element, your lens and your filters and all of those things. So the umbrella that I used to hike with broke uh, not too long ago. So I think when I get home, I'm going to order or purchase a new umbrella. All right, so I'm back in the truck. I'm gonna call it a day for now. I'm a little damp, Kyber's a little damp. He's cleaning himself off in the back of the truck. Uh, you know, it was not an ideal day weather-wise, but you can have some really great experiences and capture some amazing images if you get out there in these less than ideal conditions. Today didn't really pan out for me. I was looking for something a little bit different, but. Um, you know, I got a couple images that I'm, you know, I'm satisfied with. So, you know, if you don't be afraid to get out there in those, in those suboptimal conditions. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button down below. And if you'd like to see more, make sure you subscribe. Thanks.